The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Force Center podcast feed. This episode is one of our deep dives. We are going to be deep diving into real life star tours. What if we actually could? plan a vacation in the galaxy far, far away. I am Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsok, and I feel as though I'm eight years old waiting in line in Anaheim for Star Tours. Uh, (laughs) It's going to be fun traveling the galaxy uh, then, now, and forever. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. This is, we are often, uh, have similar um, opinions about Star Wars things or or thoughts or experiences. And this is one, when I was writing up some of these questions, I have no idea which planets you're going to pick. Some I'm like, yeah, I guess. Others I'm like, this is going to be a fun, uh, wild ride uh, in conversation as well as in imagination of literal travel. Uh, Because I had no idea where you're going to go. Uh, but right now, here's where we're going to go, a transition. We're going to let you know that uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash center. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. This week, we are recommending Victory's Price by Alexander Freed, the third book in the Alphabet Squadron trilogy. We're going to be digging into that one in a couple weeks, so if you want to be all caught up, you can listen to it by downloading your free audio book you can do that at audibletrial.com slash force center again that's audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audio book but our tour of recommendations and offers is not over we have another one to visit right ken we do we have another offer indeed inside editions publisher of a ton of great star wars books is offering 35 percent off across their website with a special Force Center code. To get your discount, enter the coupon code FC35 or coupon if that's what you want to do. And uh, visit the website with this link, insideditions.com slash discount slash FC35. FC35. This week, we're recommending the upcoming Inside Editions book, Star Wars Galactic Baking, due on May the 4th. So check it out and use that code FC35. Joseph, you a coupon guy or a coupon guy? I am a, uh, I think, a sudden panic before I say the word guy (laughs) trying to decide coupon. What are the two? It's coupon. So I guess coupon. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Coupon. I I think more, this is a four center word talk. Um, Yeah, I think I'm a a coupon guy, but I say on this copy, I say coupon. 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 Yeah. 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 Reach across the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, and it's weird to like sometimes I know like oh that's a that's a regionalism that I that I picked up mostly growing up in uh, Minnesota in the Midwest. And sometimes it's like maybe I read that you know in a comic book when I was you know yeah. six and just decided that's how you say that. <laughs> like most Star Wars names at some point. Yeah. <laughs> right. Of course I can't. Uh, I, I used to think it was when I had just read it. I was incorrect uh let's dive into our main topic which will include the planet coruscant uh we thought it'd be fun to talk just sort of the ability to actually travel in the galaxy far far away Uh, we've gotten a lot of great questions uh over the years about which planet would you visit for this which planet would you take a vacation on which the best planet all that uh so we have discussed that but i'm also i think i'm just uh, this came to me ken because i think there is uh, light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, right? Mm, uh, yeah. As things are moving forward with uh, vaccines and future travel is on my mind. The, that possibility of you know, yeah. where where could we go <laughs> now that we can go places. So I thought it would be fun to discuss. You know, if there was actual real life, like the setup of the Star Tours ride, that you know you stand in line and you, the ships are going to all these different planets. If we could visit different star wars planets do specific tourist activities you know which planets would have uh, tours and museums where would we go camping where would we just want to be away from everybody where would we want to dive into the culture all that stuff mm-hmm. um and, and really approaching it from an honest perspective because sometimes you'd be like yeah i want to go to mustafar and like no i don't <laughs> it's terrifying in reality no i don't no. <laughs> uh, so I tried to approach this honestly. But to, to give a, a frame of reference, I'm really curious to start off with talking about travel in our actual real human planet. Was travel a big part of your childhood? Do you enjoy it? What is good real world travel to you? 
So the answer is no, as far as childhood. We um, did get one vacation a year. Uh, I think I talked about it. We always went to Yosemite, which, again, might explain why a lot of my answers end up being Bright Tree Village uh, for a lot of things anytime we get this question. Uh, uh, Yosemite was like our yearly trip or Thanksgiving to Green Valley Lake, which is in the San Bernardino Mountains uh, above Big Bear uh, and Lake Arrowhead, which, again, Bright Tree Village. So that was that. We were just a lower middle class family. My parents uh, made do and I never felt the the pinch. Had a great childhood. Can't complain there. And uh, that's why uh, traveling just didn't seem it just seemed like some other people did. And, and I didn't even take my first plane flight flight. Get this until I was 30 going to Las Vegas. Um, just never had reason to. And then I hit the ground running here in L.A., gr- you know, grindstone, nose to the grindstone type of thing, um, and, and just didn't think I could travel. And it was my friend one day, friend Brian, who was like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? I was like, I don't know, working around the house trying to write a script. He's like, no, we're going to go to Vegas. And I was like, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. Well, no, we can't do that at all. I can't travel. And so it's expanded to the point where I do love now. I haven't, I, 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 I'm embarrassed to say, have been outside the United States. Can't wait to do that. Can't wait to experience the world and other places. Uh, it's on my list to do. But I love uh, last few years, going about 2008 on, just been traveling the country. I do love it. A couple cross-country drives, uh, doing comedy with Mark Ellis has been great. And my favorite thing about traveling is, of course, hotel lobbies, Joseph. <laughs> yes, I think that is probably going to come up in uh, in our discussion. Yeah, very similar uh, for myself of definitely lower um lower middle class travel was not a thing uh that yeah that was that was for other people like yeah D- disney world was uh, or disneyland that was like yeah i'll go there as much as i will you know uh, go to tatooine that's that's another world um mm-hmm. when i was young i have mentioned uh, you know born in minnesota uh we did move out to portland oregon mm-hmm. when i was a kid and we just drove out there so i think that gave me a sense of very young wanting to see other places, you know, like knowing that there are other places because at such a young age, you know, went out not only driving across, uh, you know, the country and staying in, you know, roadside motels, but stopping at weird little tourist trap places. And then when we lived in Portland, you know, we, we went up to visit some, uh, friends of my parents in Seattle and this, you know, great woodland, uh, forest. We went out to the ocean, uh, Mm -hmm. near Portland by Haystack Rock and, you know, I think I got this taste of it, but then moved back to Minnesota very quickly. Didn't go anywhere for years and years and years. And then my grandmother briefly lived in the like most southern uh, part of Texas. And uh, my mom wow. decided that we we're going to take a greyhound. So we took a greyhound <laughs> all the way from Minnesota to Texas. And it did not go smoothly at all. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Paul Simon song. America. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like the initial itinerary is like, oh, well, that's going to take a very long time. And that's going to be like five buses. And like, oh, that's going to take two days longer. And that's going to be like <laughs> 12 buses, you know, because they just oversold. And then they'd call in, you know, we got stranded somewhere in the middle of the country and they called in a driver and then the driver had to come in and we all got on the bus and the driver was like, all right, does anybody know how to get to Tulsa? <laughs> like, <laughs> should, like that level of like comic adventure. And then, uh, we uh, ended up taking a, a plane back and that was the first time yeah. that I flew. Uh, yeah. 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 And then as, so as, then as I got older, um, you know, uh, started to, uh, I, I had reason to visit uh, the UK, you know, went to Scotland, England, Wales, and Ireland, uh, went to Paris, uh, lived in the UK for uh, three months uh, with my then fiance, now wife, uh, Sarah, when she was going to school there. And then, uh, you know, started traveling more for conventions. And that's a different kind of travel, right? Where it, it really is. Sometimes you see a little bit of the city if you uh, make a point of it. But mm-hmm. other than that, it's just getting really used to the the grind of the airport and the joys of the hotels and convention centers. <laughs> it's it's a thing. I think uh, I always cite this. Uh, I think one of our early connections, just you and I just holding court in a hotel lobby bar in Vegas and just going, <laughs> yeah, I like this. Just, yeah, you can, this is what I like to do. <laughs> it, it's a, it is a fun way to travel to just sit in hotels and that's going to come up a lot in, in mm-hmm. my discussion uh any other thoughts on uh, real world travel before we get into the star wars of it no no other than uh it's still it's so funny that things from your childhood still i still sometimes have the thought of like what wait you just wait you rent you book a hotel and a flight and you go you go <laughs> you just okay. choose that that's allowed yeah 
Yeah, I think the last thing for me is I, I, I just I think a lot about the the duality that I think we have as humans of craving both comfort and adventure. Mm-hmm. And I, it's interesting that travel can be either of those things, right? You can go to someplace that's really different from your culture where you don't even uh, talk the language or you can go to somewhere remote and do something really physically challenging and arduous. Or it can be about like, I'm going to somewhere beautiful. I don't do any of the dishes. I order food to my room. It, like travel can either be, you know, absolute adventure or absolute comfort. And mm. that's one of the things I'm interested to see what comes up in our discussion of which Star Wars plants we go to do we lean towards are we craving you know being pampered on naboo you know yeah. or you know going you know parasailing on kashik you know <laughs> uh that's awesome oh this is gonna be fun yeah excellent very excited to get into it um the other thing i wanted to talk about before we start listing our planets is just the star wars actual relationship with travel i was yeah. thinking about how in some ways the actual narrative of Star Wars is a travelogue. It is often characters going from planet to planet. But in particular, I look back at that trailer that you and I have talked about a decent amount. It's from 1976. It's one of the you know original Star Wars trailers that really frames Star Wars as travel in the text. You know, it's just it's just clips of you know A New Hope, and even now knowing the film so well, like uh, some of them don't have ADR yet, and it's an actual clunk of a stormtrooper falling over you know it's it's so early but the text is really clear right the voiceover says an adventure unlike anything on your planet it's an epic of heroes and villains and aliens from a thousand worlds a billion years in the making and it's coming to your galaxy this summer there's such a framing that watching star wars is travel that you're traveling to somewhere just bizarre and different and to even you know comprehend it it has to come to our galaxy this summer is that important to star wars to you do you still think of star wars as as travel as adventure as exploration into the unknown i i absolutely really do and i think that's one of the things i love about rise of skywalker and one of the things i do love about uh the sequel era is getting to see and read about, let's not uh, forget some of the wonderful new planets and novels, uh, just getting to see more of the galaxy. Yeah, I could, I go, I'm going back to the 2014 Force Awakens teaser trailer. We saw sand and sand dunes and we all went Tatooine. That's not a far, <laughs> with Star Wars films, not a far reach. Uh, Tatooine shows up a lot. I got to tell you, I've always secretly and not so secretly really enjoyed that that wasn't Tatooine. Mm. That was- Completely other plant, new planet. And I get excited. And I just doesn't mean that like I, I, you know, what I've wanted to spend a little more time on Endor in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. In fact, remember, we were so excited. We were convinced that was a, a Pathfinder rebel helmet that Ray had dropped uh, in, in, in. Yes. Training sequence. We were really convinced. We we were so we, we thought we heard Ewoks in the background. <laughs> uh, at least the birds of Endor. Would I have enjoyed that? Yes. hundred percent. But I don't need a what if myself out of the joy of it because uh, all the new planets in Rise of Skywalker just uh, introduced me to so many different parts of the galaxy. It sounds like I'm being cheesy. It sounds like I'm just taking my heart in my sleeve for the sake of it, uh, of the conversation. No, I really love now. I'm so used to even in Mandalorian. Ooh, snow. Is it Ilum? That'd be cool. But no, I bet it's something new we've never seen. And look what we got to experience when we got to go to that ice planet in, in the second episode of the second season of Mandalorian. Something just crazy. So, yeah, I still see it as that. I still think it's key to the story. Yeah, I, I love that you're bringing up Rise of Skywalker because I think uh, another way that Rise of Skywalker tries to reconnect to that vibe is that um, the light speed skipping, right? And mm-hmm. you don't know exactly what this uh, strange reflective planet and it spires and green smoky, you know, with a monster and you just kind of don't know what it is in that idea yeah. that this galaxy is so huge and so endless. Um, I think sometimes Star Wars has lost a little bit of that exploration of the unknown, partially just because we're very familiar with Star Wars. And uh, often when we see tan, you know, uh, sand, you know what? It is Tatooine. Uh, yeah. And also, you know, in comparison to 1976, when this trailer was coming out, you know, seeing exotic genre worlds is not as rare as it was then. So I think all those things add up to like, sometimes that vibe isn't, isn't there as much, but I always think it's there in the, in the storytelling, right? Even Mm -hmm. going to like Phantom Menace, when I was putting this together, I started to think about Anakin's staring up at the, the stars and asking Qui-Gon if they all have systems and has anyone been to all of them? And he says, I want to be the first one to see them all. And I normally focus on that line because my mind always fills in and 
it slaughtered many people there. Um, but, it, you know, going away from the joke to the spirit of that, that there is that spirit in Star Wars of, uh, hey, home is great, home matters, but I want to get out and see everything there is uh, to be seen in that real spirit of adventure that travel is a part of Star Wars's key spirit of adventure. It's very much, you know, very much. I, I can't, you know, I want every time I see the Falcon, you just want to go to a new new spot. Yeah, yeah. So let's go then to some new spots. Um, I I wrestled with how to set this up, Ken, because yeah. you know sometimes we do some longer episodes. <laughs> sure, I've heard, I've heard. <laughs> and sometimes those episodes get long because I'm really trying to be a completist and not uh, leave anything out. Uh, sure. There are so many planets in Star Wars. Uh, we are gonna cover the big ones. We'll be leaving some out. But the way I decided to do this, Ken, is we're going to walk through the films in release order. Uh, We're going to talk about the major planets. uh, And then we're just going to pick one that we would be, that's the one out of this set of planets that we would add to Mm -hmm. our itinerary. And uh, we're going to decide what we'd want to do on that planet. Uh, Maybe imagine what kind of tourist traps uh, they have set up. If there's a planet you refuse to visit, uh, feel free (laughs) to tell me that too. Uh, and the other way we've constructed this game is uh, we're only listing planets in their first appearance. So uh, we're starting with A New Hope, and this is going to be our only shot at Tatooine because we're not going to repeat Ooh. every time it shows up. Ooh, oh, that's a good, this is like a game show now. That's a good rule. It's awesome. That's a good rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, limitations can be fun, right? Yeah, they can. Oh, boy. Here we go, then. We're going to start with uh, A New Hope. Uh, we've got Tatooine, of course, uh, Yavin 4 the Death Star, <laughs> and briefly, Alderaan. Uh, if you had to pick one of those, where are you going? What do you want to do? What tourist traps do they have set up? What do you got? Ma'am, gosh. Scrimshaw! You're, ah, uh, you're, because I, I, I want, I want my answer to be the Death Star. Um, and, uh, but I, there's so many things I just love about tattooing, including I'd love to get up to Jabba's Palace. Ooh. Uh, uh, including a Mos Eisley, Mos Espa, um, uh, any, any Mos I'd, I'd visit. Um, but I, I, you know, without a doubt, I think we're also having some fun with what we as human beings on this planet, what kind of uh, weather conditions and climates we're attracted to or want to explore. I don't like the heat, even though I've pretty much been living out here in the L.A. desert for a long time. <laughs> and I'm used to the summers. They get a little hot. Um, it's a dry heat, as I said, which is also why I wouldn't go to Yavin for a lot of humidity. I don't think I, I, could, I, I can't survive too well in the humidity. Um, so it's like Tatooine out and about seeing the world, but a little bit of heat and the Death Star, which would, I got to imagine some great central AC, which is <laughs> where I'm always going to. So I'm going to make the tough decision and I'm going to go with the Death Star. You're going to go to the Death Star. I actually dropped a pen. I was so nervous. I dropped a pen. <laughs> You're going to go to the Death Star mostly for the AC. Uh, what do you, what do you do on the Death Star? Uh, imagining, let's imagine that, Mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, it survived or uh, they built a, you know, someone in the galaxy built a, um, a recreation of it. What do you do on the Death Star? Uh, you know, it's like, what do we do in hotels? I'd just find a place to eat and drink and talk to people. But (laughs) so as as a child, um, one of the trips we did take, my my dad was in the Navy. My my late uncle was as well. And so my dad loves the big ships, used to build the models of them. So I've been on a couple tours of ships and, and, uh, USS Enterprise was one of the ones I've got that I got to go on, which is massive aircraft carrier. And and as a, as a youngster, probably about nine or 10, it's just, it's the, it is a Death Star. It's, it's the biggest thing in the world. I don't mean that as any commentary. I just mean in terms of size and this thing, it's not a vehicle. It is just a floating city to me. And it essentially is uh, with an airport. So I, I think I just would want to get a maintenance job on the Death Star. <laughs> and not that I'm good at it. Uh, maybe work in the kitchen and just kind of exist and live in this kind of um, weird kind of uh, portable infrastructure. <laughs> it's just going along the galaxy, fully functional uh, and experiencing just uh, it's a planet. I mean. I always talk about the Claudia Gray Lost Stars explanation of there's some stormtroopers and, and personnel who did not know the Death Star blew up Alderaan, even though they were on it because they were like on the other side. Not, they're not using, we can't use that as an excuse, but just like they didn't, I don't know. We flew to location, something happened, something shook. We don't know. We were, I was down in the mess hall. <laughs> yeah. I want no. to experience the enormity of, of this facility. Okay. I love what you're saying because I, I, I hear you saying kind of two, th- two things. One is this sort of like, um, 
tour the technological terror like uh to just really actually like walk through and like here are the nuts and bolts here's this impressive thing uh we built right yeah. uh that that's the real tourism but then you're also talking about it like it's a giant efficient uh let's say evil <laughs> yeah. uh, floating hotel where you could just be like look they they've got a starbucks <laughs> i just live here yeah yeah just want to live there Death Star is a long stay motel. That's your first stop. <laughs> I love it. This was really, really hard, but I had to wrestle with that reality of how what I actually enjoy when I travel. And there's a part of me is like Tatooine, oh, but the heat and the travel mm-hmm. and the discomfort. Uh, you know, I know we, we don't spend quality time on the surface, but I'm counting Alderaan as appearing. It appears and then it disappears. Um, I would absolutely go to Alderaan, right? There's so many descriptions yeah. in the books about its culture. And one of the things I love doing is going to uh, art museums or uh, writer museums. Uh, we went, my wife and I uh, went to both uh, Edinburgh and Dublin, kind of one mm. right after the other. And they both have writer museums. And it's just such a great way to start understanding how the place sees itself. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. what is its favorite children write about it, you know? Uh, I love going to art museums and I know Alderaan would have great art museums. And then I'm going to be honest, uh, you know, one of the things that I like to do when traveling is just have a little drink. So the idea that I could go to an Alderanian art museum and then have a big, big glass of Tonnerre, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's honestly where I'm going to go. Oh, hear me out here. This is a total uh, Southern California four center conversation point. Alderaan, Alderaan, a little bit like going up to the Getty Center. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, yeah, well, my wife and I took a trip up to the Solvang, the, the Dutch town. And that's it's uh, just this weird, uh, just but very, very pleasant community. And it's a tourist stop and they has a ton of wine tastings. And yeah, like, uh, let's uh, look at uh, this, this uh, fun community, go to a little bookstore drink some wine i'll do that on alderaan yeah and then get out before the getting's good yes uh but yeah um yeah that's that's it's such a i love the, the second you get to spend it in revenge of the sith i just i was like oh so that's what it is it's like so it. beautiful yeah and i know some people going to alderaan and be like yeah i'm gonna climb a mountain i'll be like, that's cool sure. i'm gonna look at a painting of somebody else climbing the mountain yeah Uh, Some of these answers, I think uh, there'll be a theme coming out of them. Uh, But let's move on on our travelogue to Empire Strikes Back. We have Hoth, uh, Bespin slash Cloud City. Probably can't literally visit Bespin. Wouldn't be safe, what with the gas giant and all. And then, of course, Dagobah. Ken, which one are you picking and what are you doing? I love the cold. I love the cold. You want to put me in a ski lodge? I don't want to ski. I just want to sit there drinking hot chocolate. (laughs) Um, But Hoth... Like I, I, I look, the answer is Cloud City. Let's just 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 cut to the chase. The answer is Cloud <laughs> City. Good urban environment. I think uh, Lando brought some absolute uh, style and charm to that place. Uh, I love we, the Empire Special Edition version is even better, but uh, the original one in 1980 isn't bad itself. Like I, I just like it. You and I've talked about it. Love roll rolling around in Battlefront games and that Dagobah. Nope, nope, just. I, you know, I can't, there's just too many things, too many things. I would never leave the hut. Um, Hoth, it's not, it's too cold. Maybe I, I, I just, there's, it's, it's just too cold. It's not, that's not a ski lodge. That's no. an experience. Yeah. No, it is. It is, uh, a survivalist dream. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can't do Hoth myself because I have lived in, in extreme cold growing up in Minnesota, which runs both extremely cold, extremely hot and almost nothing in between. Uh, so I I couldn't do Hoth, uh, Dagobah, you know, this is, this is what's fun about this because, you know, if, if you're picturing yourself as a Jedi, as an adventurer in the the galaxy of Star Wars, like, yeah, I want to go to Dagobah. Yeah. I want to go to the, the cave, uh, and, and see and confront myself like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to confront myself in a nightmare tree while a snake crawls all over all over me. That's not a pleasant uh, real world vacation. So yeah, I'm going to Cloud City. Uh, you that's know what? I therapy. go ahead. Sorry. No, that's just therapy. Dagobah's just therapy. I'll I'll go to therapy. I don't want. I don't need to go to a mud ball to do it. <laughs> uh, Dagobah, slimy mud hole therapy planet. This is. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Cloud City, you know, I love all of those sculptures. I, uh, those big freestanding sculptures that are in the background. Uh, I picture myself taking selfies with those. Maybe you catch Vader walking in the background. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I love the way it's been fleshed out as like, it's a, it's a city. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, got a function uh, yeah. of mining Tabana gas, uh, but it is a city with like uh, shopping. Yeah. And it feels like, hmm. what if, uh, the Mall of America, also from uh, my home uh, of Minnesota, was just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you know, and you could go to see, you know, the new Hollow movie. And then you yeah. could go, uh, you know, pick out uh, some clothes or a high-end souvenir. I'm going to get this, you know, really nice mm. uh, glass plate to, to mm. give as a gift to somebody for the holidays. Uh, but And then when I was picturing it as, like, this amazing... <laughs> <laughs> floating mall it's like i bet i bet there are like cloud city mall walkers who just like oh, yeah. get a bunch of exercise doing loops you know 100 percent. and then by the way they get mad at you if you take the parking spots close to the mall at five in the morning because they have to walk farther that's another life conversation <laughs> I've had. um yes well you you know essentially i i i you bring it in the mall of america you you're kind of describing a lifestyle center say a, a, a americana brand uh caruso property in la where they yeah you know what we got a mall let's put a fountain and an apartment complex in it and i've always secretly kind of wanted to live in one of those i'm so <laughs> fascinated by that when i go the, there and it's just like yeah these apartments just looking out on a bunch of people shopping shopping and like um you know, it's not like New York City. That's a different experience. But like when I we got the job at Collider uh, and left, uh, you know, I used to drive about an hour, sometimes hour 40 minutes to get to Beverly Hills for the Screen Junkies job from my house. And it's just, it was just too much. And I was 10 minutes from the Collider Studios in Edmonton Burbank. But I, I really, me and Mark Ellis used to dream about, oh, let's get one of those apartments above the AMC theater. <laughs> you know, like would you always hear kids every night screaming in the, uh, yeah, but Johnny Rockets is right down below you. <laughs> so... I don't know. Again, hotel lobby water. That's what we love. So Cloud City kind of has that vibe to me. versus Coruscant is kind of New York City to me. We'll cross that uh, conversation bridge when we get there. But yeah, Cloud City is smooth. You get to feel the hustle and bustle of the whole business and the industry that's around it. And you get to go to local watering holes and uh, hang out and then walk, stumble five feet to your apartment. I like it. Right. Yeah. And it's all got this like level of uh elegance, right? Because it, mm -hmm. it just it, it feels like you would be like there'd be a little bit of like Hey, yeah, Bestman uh, Cloud City is open to tourists, but no flip flops, no shorts. <laughs> yes, you're gonna you're gonna buy something nice, and everybody's gonna look nice as they're going around. Uh, the other thing for me is uh, what I've been saying to my wife right now. Uh, my wife can lean a little bit more towards let's have adventure, let's see something new, and I keep saying to my wife, I want to go somewhere beautiful with mm -hmm. a window, and then I just want to sit by the window and read. <laughs> And a part of me is like, what would you do at Cloud City? Like, uh, I'm sure they have like little, uh, you know, reclining couches right by the window to look out at the beautiful clouds. I want to sit yeah. there and read a book. That's what I want to do. Just hear every now and then, do, 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 as a cloud car goes by. Do, do, oh, do, 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 do. And I would get so excited trying to peek in there and see the little cloud car pilots. Oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> and look, I know there's listeners who are like, look, Joseph, Kent, well, give me a tent, a sleeping bag, if anything and it, it get me to the wilderness i i'm with you i always wanted that i just can't get myself to do it yeah yeah i mean and and i uh yeah well let's move on because we got yeah. a we got a good discussion of that coming up return of the jedi our options are endor <laughs> because uh we're winnowing down the planets that have already appeared uh so we want to go to Endor, right? I know you want to yeah. go to Endor, Ken, but do. What, what is what is it in your mind? What do you do when you get to the forest moon of Endor? I I try to get up to that village as soon as I can. I do some exploring. Um, I don't you know, pre or post Empire, I don't know. Uh, let's just say post, it's a little I, I, more of an idyllic setting. Um, I, so I said, my, so my dad does love camping. My mom just never, no, there was, a, you know, if she can't plug in her hairdryer, she didn't want to do it. And it wasn't like she's, you know, true Beverly Hills or something like that. Just two different styles. And my dad is, he'd go with some of his friends or, you know, whatever the church group and they go into the, you know, forest and camp for three days. And my, one time my dad, came, ah, there was a bear knocking our tent. I'm like, well, I'm out. Like <laughs> I'm out, but I loved going to Yosemite. Camp Curry cabins. We could see a bear from the bus and then get back to that cabin. As long as we locked our Subaru, no bear was bothering us. <laughs> um, so I'm a little bit of that. So 
Endor represents my love of forest. I do love a good pine tree. We have them out in front of our house here. I'm so blessed to have that. So I step out in my front yard uh, to get to my car. I feel like I'm in Endor just with a 2002 Mustang. So I like it. I want to get up to the safety of the village, get a little cabin. Uh, I mentioned going to Lake Arrowhead, uh, Green Valley Lake. It's uh, it's the highest point in that that mountain uh, range out by uh, uh, SoCal here, the where, where people live. And snow, bad conditions. I mean, there's been our car got stuck in the snow. I thought we were going to die one time. Uh, You're also, supposed to have chains, right? Yeah, yeah, and even that didn't work. And I'm seven, I'm terrified. But then you get to the cabin, and you get a fire and hot chocolate, and your great uncle tells you a story, and you just feel good. I got to imagine low gray telling me a story feels like that, and that's why I want to go to Endor. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, I, I'm in the same thing. Like my dad, um, my dad, uh, you know, grew up, uh, you know, small town uh, Brainerd. He played outside a lot. He's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, a, a good woods person. And he always wanted to take us camping and it just, it never worked out time wise and it, we just never got used to it. You know, I've done some kind of nature things with my dad, you know, he had a, a canoe for a while, so uh, we never did anything rugged. We didn't, you know, go up to the boundary waters in Minnesota, but we would take him to the lakes on, in, uh, in Minneapolis and do a little bit of canoeing. So, you know, I, I've, I've done nature light, but it has never been a part of my life. Um, mm-hmm. so if I went to Endor, I, yeah, I totally respect that people be like, what do I want to do? I want to build my own hut. <laughs> <laughs> just be, uh, you know, alone in the forest, uh, and forage for myself and hunt <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and take care of myself. Uh, get that. Here's what I want on Andor, Ken. Mm-hmm. I desperately want, and I think we joked about this in an old episode of databank brawl. I want the Republic to have worked with the Ewoks with their permission to have set up an interactive museum. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is a bunch of, it's kind of adventure, but not really. I want it to be like, you can wait in line and an Ewok uh, will safely show you how to swing on a vine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can ride a speeder bike at speed, but it's like, it's, Ooh. you know, on a rail and you're strapped in. So it only feels like you're going to run into the trees, but you're not really. And they've got a bunch of the helmet xylophones set up so you can play those like, <laughs> I want to go to Endor and have like the totally safe version of like relive the experience of what the rebels went through on Endor, uh, but totally safe. That is like a, a combination of like an adult fantasy camp, like go to baseball camp, <laughs> play with retired pros meets like one of those children's museums where you can go play with big foam bricks to teach you about history. This is great. I love this idea. Um, and, and me being a speeder bike fan who would, Never get on a motorcycle. This is perfect for me. <laughs> old speeder biking, safe speeder bikes. Yeah, I mean the other thing about these uh, locations as we go through them is, um, in some ways, uh, we can go to Endor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, because it is just an actual uh, forest, and there are places you can visit. And for the version of Endor where I go and stay in, you know, a cabin with its own bathroom and read a book, uh, I might do that soon. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I was always obsessed with that idea as a kid of, um, you know, getting that behind the first behind the scenes magazine I got. And it was like Crescent City. And my mom, dad going, oh, yeah, that's up uh, up the five, you know. Remember when we took that trip to, you know, Corvallis, Oregon? That's right. Like, what do you mean? It's real? <laughs> Why are we there now every day? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's such a great push pull of like, you can't visit Felucia. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you can kind of visit the forest moon of Endor. Do you do you think total in canon uh, question here? Do you think there is some sort of memorial set up around like the bunker or the or any anything you know that they turn some of the that war torn part of uh, the village area into into a m- memorial? Yeah, I mean, I think to me is it's definitely something that we've joked about over the years, and I think it, there is like a jokey version of it. But I think there is a a, a, a way that that really makes sense in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Of um, you know, some people like Mon Mothma and Leia understanding the power of storytelling, and mm-hmm. you know, the Empire has been a place of propaganda, right? Uh, so it is important for them, even in, I mean, we do have some of it, like they, uh, isn't it the, the, their statues are being erected at the end of, um, it's the aftermath, right? Mm, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Been a bit, been a bit for me. Those details. Uh, yeah. yeah I think sense. both aftermath and bloodline have an element of we're unveiling something to celebrate, you know, in, in Coruscant yeah. is clearly loaded with, uh, things that are, that are symbols of the past. So 
there's the super jokey version of like there's historic plaques that say here's where Chewie took the ATSD, but right. then there is that much more in galaxy version of that that makes sense of like something important here happened here and we're, we're going to tell the true story you know of yeah. you know of, of you know honor the ewoks you know yeah and you know and, and look uh chirpa is, is nothing if not just inventive and you've and and take you know takes good advantage i bet there's a gift shop there <laughs> you know swing up there gift shop get yourself like a hollowed out mug you know. oh yeah and everybody's just like ah those ewoks are so capitalist <laughs> Just capitalist <laughs> Just cashing in on their own cuteness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to move out of the original trilogy into the prequel trilogy. We are going to the Phantom Menace. Again, we've already been to Tatooine. Uh, so we have Naboo and Coruscant. That's mm. a hard choice, Ken. Got to pick one or the other. Where are you going? What you doing? Ooh, your rules are good. They're harsh, but they're good. I got to tell you ah oh, man sir now boo's the spot right we all want to retire to naboo we every podcast you get that que- question so many times i uh, but i love corson i just love it man I, I you know i don't want to i don't know if i'll ever live in manhattan but i love going there including times square when i'm not supposed to go because it's thirsty i get it i get it doesn't matter to me i love the lights i love the buzz i love a bar at four in the morning i want to go to dexter's diner this is why we mention all the time i'm going Corson. yeah i went through the same process of like yeah naboo is the answer to like oh no but seriously yeah don't you want to go to lake country come on um yeah. but I feel like in my own uh, itinerary here, I'm getting a little bit that vibe of the the art and the culture in the history mm-hmm. of Alderaan. Not that they're the same, but I, I got to go to Coruscant, right? I mean, I am ultimately, uh, I, I've lived in very small towns. I've lived in mid-side towns, but I'm ultimately a, a city person. I just, mm-hmm. I'm really fascinated and electrified by all these different ideas, all these different, you know, all this different architecture and all these different people uh, living together. And how do you make, uh, if, if there are eight bars within two blocks, how do you make this bar special? What makes mm. the magic of it? Like, I just, I love the whole city vibe. So I got to see a Coruscant. The whole uh, city is one, the whole big planet's one city. Got to go to it. Um, yeah. What would you do <sighs> on Coruscant? Um, you know, I here's what I would do. I would, um, I would get my feet on the ground or my feet in a speeder and just kind of get the lay of the land. Would I want to go down to 1313? No, I, I tempt myself, <laughs> but you know, I'm sure up front and in, in your face, that's maybe not the best area to go down, but I would, I would explore enough um, and uh, explore enough to feel as though I could survive as a local. Uh, um, I think that's kind of a lot of travelers. That's what you, you love doing. It's, it's the, um, uh, peel of the, of the Lake Great Anthony Bourdain, right? Just kind of hit the ground and find the people, find the food, find the culture. And that's what I love about New York. I, I very quickly, once I finally got there late in life, it was like, when I'm here, I'm going to go to Times Square. I'm going to get myself a Times Square hot dog. But I, I also don't want to completely stand out. <laughs> I want to feel like I'm here. And it, they're, 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 that way you can experience a lot more of it. That's what I would try to do in Corson. Uh, uh, I would get, get a little spot, kind of find out where to go, and then just kind of live. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, I would do the same thing. I would want to see tourist Coruscant and, you know, quote unquote, real Coruscant. So, you know, if the Jedi Temple is doing tours, uh, oh, that's that's my first stop. That's that's what I'm there for. Right. That's the whole thing. I got to see that Jedi Temple if they'll if they'll let me and, you know, actually uh, you know, walk through and, and, you know, do some reading in the archives, take some selfies <laughs> yeah. in the in the Jedi Council chamber. Probably not allowed. Uh, but I gotta, gotta do the tourist stuff. Um, and then uh, Coruscant, uh, I think because it has the, the storytelling is it has these many layers, the old and the new, uh, my mind goes to the couple times I visited Edinburgh, Scotland, um, mm. which has like some very old parts and some newer parts. It's you know, new town, old town. Uh, it's got the big, uh, castle, uh, on a hill. And the first time I went to Edinburgh, went up to the castle, which is obviously it's a, it's a tourist, uh, location. And then went to a not touristy pub, just a pub and, mm. you know, uh, a friendly person, uh, but a, a person from Edinburgh who'd uh, had a few, uh, drinks, uh, noticed that we were, uh, tourists. I think it was when I tried to order a screwdriver <laughs> the bartender's like, what are you talking about? Um, 
uh, that's term. It's not there. Uh, and they were, they were tipsy, but they're very friendly. Like you're tourists, aren't you? And we're like, Oh yeah. And you're like, did you go to the castle? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. And she was like, well, that's not the real Edinburgh experience. I was like, okay, cool. What's, what's the real Edinburgh experience? Uh, and she held her whiskey up in the air and said, getting pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, I just, uh, it, it was just one of those great moments of just, um, you know, the, the reality of, uh, you know, there, there are towns that have tourist places and then there are towns where just like, you know, but they also have the, like, this is a real bar. This is where real people go, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I know Coruscant would be like that. Right. So I would love to go to like the, this is the, the themed, uh, bar. Yo, did you stay at the jedi bar and with the, all the themes and oh did you you know have the the beer that comes out of the light that you drink out of the lightsaber glass you tourist but then you could go to somewhere that's just like no these are just uh people who you know work yeah you know live uh it, and it just going from place to place doing their thing and you're having a real drink with the real people of course on Love that. Look, I, yeah, I, I'd want to go see the Jedi Temple. I'd snap some pictures in front of the uh, Senate chambers, all those kind of things. Uh, I would do that. But then, yeah, you're right. I, I, I'd, you know, you, you'd, you'd head to Dexter's Diner and he'd be like, Taurus, eh? you want the real Coruscant? And he'd do it for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, this is the other question I was going to ask you about Coruscant, Ken. Mm -hmm. uh, so you and I both have in our, our real life travel profiles of doing shows. Yeah. Would you want to do a show on Coruscant? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as a, as a stand up comic in L.A. for a long time, it was it always was just taunting me in the back of my head that I didn't do a show in New York and finally getting to to do that with, with Mark Ellis uh, in a great uh, underground uh, New York comedy, not underground like you could, but like a New York comedy club that I had to go downstairs to get to like that whole experience. <laughs> It just was something special, and and the city does have that vibe, and and I gotta imagine course, and you know it's just a little scary, but it's high energy, and it feels good when you do it, and uh, that's what I, I sign me up, sign me up. Absolutely, I want to do a, I want to do stand up uh, in the back room of the Outlander Club. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that would be great fun. Move on to Attack of the Clones uh, for new planets. We got Geonosis and Camino. Uh, which one do you pick there? Look, the, the answer is Camino. Uh, number one, I just love rain. It's been kind of raining off and on here today as we record, so I love that. I do love rain. Uh, Camino might be a lot of rain. Um, uh, you're someone who's experienced a lot of weather in one spot. <laughs> I've chosen. <laughs> um, but uh, Gino, so I love Genosis. I, I love uh, going around Battlefront 2. That's one of my favorite maps. I think it's a, I'm fascinated with that whole culture. And you and I get to, to dig in a little bit to uh, uh, to the culture and the, and the people and the poggles and the lessers of, uh, you know, <laughs> it's fascinating and, and, and they're bug like, and, and you can easily overlook them, but they're so smart and they're so inventive and dangerous. I just don't, I, I think if we're talking about, you know, this isn't Ken from Burbank going, this is like Ken Zock from, you know, the outer rim. I don't think I'd be, I don't think they'd want me there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I disagree with him on that. And I just, I might have to read about it. And Camino, it's exotic. It's 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 urban as well. You got it's uh, got a big city center there inside those domes. Um, and not a lot to do there, I wouldn't think. But I'd have to go Camino. Yeah, same same thing with me. I feel like Geonosis is fun to visit in on screen and on video games, but that's really rough in it. That's rough. <laughs> but that's like that's the version of travel where you prove something to yourself. Of like, yep. I, uh, there are some hostile creatures that probably don't want me there. Um, there is a small possibility a worm will cra crawl up my right. nose <laughs> right. and take over my mind, you know, but besides that, you know, that's the point of travel challenge, new experiences. Have you ever been taken over by a Gene Ocean hive mind? Give it a try. Um, that's yeah. not for me. Uh, so I got to go to Camino. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the ocean world, but also like the constant storm. Oh, so cool. And if there's any sort of tourist attraction, on Camino, the one I pictured is that they still have like the um, the Clone War trial rooms uh, yeah. set up uh, where you can practice your combat, Ooh. and it's basically like uh, play laser tag on Camino. Yeah, it'd, it'd be like some of the uh, early syndicated uh, the version of uh, American Gladiators when they had the you know it kind of looked like that. Um, 
and you can launch tennis balls down at your opponents as they try to get through the obstacle course. Like that's yes. Do me that. Give, give, give me the clone training experience package. <laughs> me too. Which means we're on to revenge of the Sith and our planet count explodes. Uh, we got Kashyyyk. Uh, you know, I, I didn't include its appearance in the holiday special. Utapau, Mustafar, Polis Massa. And then of course, if you, if you add in the clone death scenes, you got Felucia, Salukamai, Magito, Katonimoidia, it's you know it's a lot going on there so ken do you do you go to a clone death planet <laughs> just, just do the morbid clone death uh tour which you know uh, as a billy the kid uh, aficionado who's not gone on that billy the kid tour that's a little morbid too so uh you probably not too far from the truth right um as i stare at my young guns poster hanging on my wall shout out to john fusco and young guns three coming our way um look um Kashyyyk's my answer, Smith and Kashyyyk. But I gotta tell you, I've always loved my Gito. Love playing it in the original Battlefront too. And Salukamai, you and I spending a little more time on there in the Clone Wars reviews on Clone Wars Report. It's it's uh, don't uh, don't sleep on that planet. There's stuff going on there that I could dig. I could dig that. Um, but yeah, Kashyyyk, a little bit like the Endor vibe for me. Um, I just uh, love finally seeing it in Revenge of the Sith. But also, I'll say. Finally, reading about it in Zahn's uh, you know, *Air of the Empire* trilogy, you've got to spend a lot of quality time on Kashyyyk, and and I do um, do enjoy it. And yes, the holiday special, uh, can't forget that. But uh, I'm going to Kashyyyk. Um, uh, just again, talk about a, a culture I think is really fascinating and and uh, overlooked and undervalued maybe a lot of the times, and clearly by the Empire and all the bad things they did. Uh, I'd love to go to a liberated Kashyyyk and kind of uh, experience a little bit of their history up front and personal. So uh, Kashyyyk it is for me. Yeah, no, I got to agree with you. And I love the idea that if they were presenting themselves to tourists, like Saluk and I would have to be like, we're more than the place where Stas Ali died. (laughs) (laughs) We have beautiful trees and farms. Yeah. We didn't just kill a Jedi here. (laughs) Uh, But uh, Mustafar is like, I would do a flyby tour of Mustafar if you were in like some sort of tourist uh, ship that was zipping through the galaxy with like you know uh, strange like glass floor so you could see everything like I I do that I don't need to get out on Mustafar so I'm going with Kashyyyk as well Um, I I would love to just uh, sit in the treehouse and read that would be great what a great place to just read Uh, but then for the other activities you could do on Kashyyyk I bet that they would have not just Wookiee climbing guides. I bet that you, they would have like a service where you, or uh, rather me, uh, I'll say for myself, a puny human could be strapped to a Wookiee while the Wookiee just climbs the trees. And it yeah. would be scary as hell, but you would know you're totally safe. Yeah, I'd, I'd, experience, I'd love all that. I love all that. I, I do love Kashyyyk. And I don't say that, I don't mean to sound negative. The, the, a lot of the things about Kashyyyk in the game fall in order. I just, I didn't expect to see on that planet it winning it my, against my own expectations of that planet. <laughs> it, it's Kashyyyk. Uh, but I'd be like, well, where's the happy uh, tree villages? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that was, yeah, that was, I forget about that level. It was all about just climbing that massive, massive tree. Right. Yeah. And just some of the weird creatures and everything. Again, I can accept in canon that there's there not saying anything bad about the game, but I just remember going, no, no, I just want to go on the beach. Kachiro beach. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We think of it as the beach from revenge of the Sith, uh, the yeah. great big uh, tree villages. Uh, but then yes, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you take fall Order into account, it's like, and also don't uh, poke your head out. Cause a giant bird might come and just take you. Take you. <laughs> There's always a little adventure, even on the comfort of Kashyyyk. Uh, We are going to take a quick break, and then we will dive into all of the other great uh, planets in Star Wars. We will be right back. Hey, Force Center friends, make sure you're keeping up to date on all the great content from Jennifer Landa. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, you whippersnappers, Force Center's own Jennifer Landa continues to bring you fun, informative, and insightful laughs and moments. 
Also, Jennifer brings her experience and perspective as a Star Wars loving mother to her DIY projects, blogs, and more. So be sure to head on over to JennyLanda.com. That's J-E-N-I-L-A-N-D-A.com for articles like how to make your own Darth Maul sneakers or 10 unique Star Wars baby gift ideas. Follow Jen on Twitter and Instagram at Jennifer Landa and on TikTok as Jennifer Landa 1138. And we are back to finish our tour of planets in Star Wars, brutally forcing ourselves to pick just one from uh, different films. Uh, and more than films, uh, Star Wars, of course, has some great television shows. So, Ken, uh, for our second half of our episode, I bundled some of the major planets from Clone Wars, Rebels, and Resistance. Now, this uh, the list of planets we go to in those three shows could be just, you know, hours and hours of discussion all by themselves. So here are the ones that I picked out that are, I think we spend a lot of time on or are really major to the story of Star Wars. We got Man- Mandalore, uh, Lothal, Dathomir, Adalon, Ilum, Ryloth, Castellon. Those are the planets I picked out. I understand some people would be like, what about this planet? Uh, but for the sake mm-hmm. of argument, those are the ones that I picked out. What, uh, Which planet do you pick out of those? Look, I... If I'm looking for maybe a new place to live or a nice relaxing week, I might go to Lothal. There's a lot of love about those rolling uh, hills of uh, green grass or brown grass. <laughs> Sometimes Mandalore, you talk about history, but that planet, not in the best of shape, right? Stepping outside, you got to definitely make sure you're protected there. Uh, Death Mare, too scary for little Kenny. Uh, Adelon, Castion, uh, right. but see, the answer is Ilum. I, I, I am obsessed with Ilum, like a lot of people. I do love a lot of, I want to know more about it. I want to know more about when the Jedi first went there. I love that uh, uh, Starkiller base is Ilum, but my perhaps one regret is that that wasn't, you know, dealt with. You know, we didn't mm-hmm. hear, uh, you know, did I need to hear it in Force Awakens? Eh, maybe not, but um, it, it would have been cool. And I was always all in on those conspiracies early on when it's on the same spot of the map it is you know go for it for there so anyways i'd love to visit ilum and just kind of take in the history and then go to the ilum gift shop get yourself a fake kyber crystal <laughs> uh i was very very tempted by ilum and, and you are making some good arguments for it but the cold <laughs> yeah look yeah you know but I agree then I'm right on the fence. I'm right on the fence. I almost picked uh, Ilum because the cold is worth it. It's definitely one of my favorite planets in all of Star Wars. It, you know, the the Jedi relationship with it. Definitely my favorite level in Fallen Order. That was the one for me where the video game was like, I don't, I don't care about any other uh, criticisms I might have. This is gold. Uh, white gold on Ilum. Uh, but I would go to Mandalore. Uh Because the dome city thing is really, really cool. And here's the thing about Mandalore to me is I started my, my itinerary with Alderaan with museums, right? Um, Mandalore is a place that cares about its history, makes beautiful art about its history, puts up statues. There's gotta be so many museums of war Mm. (laughs) on Mandalore. That would be that like really fascinating. Like, let's look at these cool weapons Here's this one panel that's this about this brutal conflict where this many people died. Here's, uh, you know, how it happened. Here's the strategy of uh, this clan in this battle. I would love that because, uh, you know, sometimes that doesn't sound like the most fun experience. Yeah. When my wife and I uh, were living in, in the UK for her birthday, uh, when we were there, I was like, what do you want to do? And she's like, I want to go to a museum today. I'm like, that's great. And we went to the Imperial Museum of War. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this is going to be a weird birthday, but it was so fascinating, right? Because it's yeah. kind of this, uh, it's the safe way to be fascinated by the technology, the history, but also just kind of cope with the horror of it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I feel like Mandalore would be this great, uh, great history lesson and kind of, kind of travel. I like of really digging into the, like, what is this place all about? What can we learn from this place? You know, and there'd be so much pride, right? Mandalore would be that kind of like, you know, there'd be tour guides out on the street saying like, I'm going to tell you what Mandalore is about. It's such a place of pride, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a great answer. And, and, and to even clear, 
clarify for myself, like I, I, um, I'm looking at like Sabine's home planet of, uh, of crow nest or, or crown nest, depending on how you want to say it there. I'd, I'd had there. Cause I love number one, her house, the, 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 the house, uh, the house Ren house is like a, uh, James Bond villain hideaway. <laughs> the big third act <laughs> happens in. I love that. Um, so overall, you know, um, not saying that you should put more choices. I'm just saying like, I, I want for myself, I'm like Mandalore as a whole, there's a lot of things to see there. A lot of things. I don't want to overlook that there. Um, but I'm still a pack in a park and head and to Ilum, I guess. Right. But you could go to the, the Mandalorian controlled systems the same way somebody says like, I'm going to Europe and then I'm, you're going to stop at all these different places. There you go. That's a great way. Yeah. Good program. call. Good call. So we move on to Rogue One. We got Lamu, the Ring of Kafreen, Wobani, Idu, and Scarif. Ken, are you just going to Scarif? <laughs> I, no, no, I thought about, I, and I'm not, I'm not just trying to be, I'm trying to, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not trying to be contradictory here. Uh, I, I think I might go to Lamu, but here's, here's why. So Scarif is, is, if, look, if I'm a stormtrooper, do I, I'm heading there. I, mean, <laughs> I want to work hard for that uh, assignment. Um, that That's what I want to do. Um, I, and again, I've said before, I grew up a mile from the beach, could see the beach from my house, but my beach was, you might have had uh, swim trunks on, but you also had a hoodie. So Scarif is, om- is almost too beautiful for me. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Um, we've had a lot of great databank brawls there. Um, I I think Lemu, we don't see obviously much of it there. Um, um, but I, there's some, uh, if I'm packing up and maybe I don't do a, I'm going to go right weekends. I should need to do more, but, um, I've thought about that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I think I'd head there. Waboni, no, Edu, I love the red rain, but that's, that's not a inviting service. So it's what we see. Ring of Kafrain Kep- interesting because having said all these wonderful things about Coruscant, what we see of that city, that's almost where, where the small town boy in me turns down the wrong street in Manhattan. It's like, oh, this isn't <laughs> home. Uh, Ring Ring of Kafrain has a little rough edges there, you know, which uh, I would love to experience. I don't want to change it, but I don't think I'd spend time too much time there. But Lemu, of these choices, I'm going to go. I left field. I'm going to take that idyllic, quiet uh, uh, place to just kind of relax and focus and get away from Krennic. Yeah, Lemu is really a place to recenter, right? Just spend yeah. quality time with your loved ones, you know, make a nice stew, read a book in the yeah. evening, kick yeah. back. I'm sure the sunset's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Is it super exciting? No, but that's the point. I don't need that. Exactly, exactly. I think that's great. And I was tempted by a couple of the others, not Wobani or Edu. They don't look pleasant, but I got to go to Scarif. Uh, yeah. And I, I want to think that Scarif is the planet that would have uh, like would be like visiting in America a Civil War, <laughs> mm. you know, reenactment. Uh, I feel like that's the planet where you would like really tour the battlefield, and it would be mm-hmm. both beautiful, but also uh, historically, um, you know, uh, amazing. I'm assuming that it's either been recreated or <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the water has lowered. Um, but I'm just fat. It's it's one of the most beautiful planets in Star Wars. I think it's such a great switch that something yeah. so scary happened in such a beautiful place you know uh we see a little bit of scary stuff happening on Naboo but Scarif is just uh, there's just something kind of magic about it and I mm. I do just want to uh hang out there maybe learn a little bit of history but mostly just stare at the uh the water and the palm trees and sure. uh, maybe wear short trooper armor <laughs> yeah maybe you do that and just you know if you're staring out there and there's a giant red cloud suddenly appears uh, yeah Try to get out of there fast or hold on to someone. Yeah. <laughs> no, they would, they, yeah, they would be very half, uh, have to be very careful with the way they advertise it. Right. Of like scare yeah. hold on to your loved ones. No, not like that. Not like that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, we're going to move on to solo a star Wars story. We got a lot of planets, some of them not new to star Wars, but some we get to see on the big screen, right? Uh, Corellia, Vandor, Kessel, Saverine, Mimban, Numidian Prime, tons of options. Where do you go? Now, we obviously get to see a little bit more Kessel in Clone Wars Season 7, and a lot of, a lot of it I'd say I, I like. Mimban, that doesn't, uh, you know, no disrespect to the Mimbanese there, not uh, the most inviting planet. Numidian Prime, oh, I like this. Uh, a little too tropical for me, you know, if we're getting personal here, a little, a little too, <laughs> the tropical uh, heat and humidity. 
Vandor, I love it. So I love the snow. I love a good lodge. You might think I'd want to head there. I'm going to go Savarine. Ooh. The reason being, um, that reminds me a little bit more of my hometown. Beaches with cliffs. <laughs> Not saying it's cold there. It looks kind of warm, but I bet there's a cold ocean breeze that comes on in there. Um, so Savarine, um, you know, it's it's a very humble setup there. Uh, maybe not even humble by choice. Uh, maybe they'd like, like a luxury hotel. I'm not saying one needs to be put up there, but I, I think I um, I could make my way there and be okay for a bit and take some time out there and just kind of uh, learn to learn, uh, you know, what the people are, are about there. And and I got to imagine Infus Nest, I think she returns there. I think they that's a base of operations for me in my head canon with the Cloud Riders. So I'm going Savarine. Karelia is a great choice. History there, but uh, not in the best spot. So, uh, uh, you know, it's not the best, uh, you know, the damn empire. Foot uh, foot of oppression down on that fair city, uh, fair planet. Um, so Savarine is my answer. No, I think that's a very good one. And it, 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 I can picture you uh, sitting in a hut uh, being served like some good whiskey in a, in mm -hmm. a, or brandy or uh, in a in a little dusty glass, and then just you know watching Young Guns two on your iPad. There you go. That's all. That's all. <laughs> it's got a good Western vibe for you. Yeah. I did go with Corellia. I'm gonna hope in my imagination that this is post Empire. Uh, but mm -hmm. man, I think for me, I kind of went where your mind did with the Death Star with our first question of like the tours of the shipbuilding factories, right? Nice. Just the absolute awe of this is where these amazing ships are made. Here's how they're made. Uh, and I just, I love the way what we saw of it in Solo, mm -hmm. that it's got all of these little land masses connected by these long bridges. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah. I think it's because of those really young childhood memories driving across country from Minnesota uh, to Oregon um, mm -hmm. that I, I really love bridges. You know, there's yeah. like, I think I still kind of have like a little childhood uh, magic about being on a bridge. So zipping along those ocean bound uh, bridges, man, that would be great. Yeah. And then I also think Corellia would have for the tourists, great flight simulators where you could pretend you were flying. So it'd be totally safe. Yeah. And then they would have some extremely real, extremely local bars. <laughs> <laughs> very real. <laughs> the yeah. very real, the like, uh, you'd have to be polite of like, is it okay that a tourist comes here or is this absolutely just for people <laughs> who are yeah. working on, uh, on YT 1300s, you know? Oh, don't head to the Double Down Saloon in Las Vegas, people. Don't <laughs> do that if you're a tourist. I can tell you from personal experience. Fair enough. So we head into the great big old sequel trilogy. We go to The Force Awakens. We got Jakku, Takodana, Dakar, Hosnian Prime, briefly, sadly, Octo, Star Killer Base, which is technically Ilum, so maybe we shouldn't have it because it is cheating. Ken, where do you go? Look, um... Oh, your rules are great, man. This is a great game. This this episode turned into some sort of game show. Uh, <laughs> uh, choose your planet. Um, it's if if Octo's the one. Look, I I, I yeah, Octo, especially with where I am in life, <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good spot. Octo would be the spot. Not that it's, not that it's comfortable, but. Takadana is coming in close. I mean, I'd love to rent a room at Maz's castle for a weekend, just kind of get away. The car is really an underrated planet. I think it's, it's kind of uh, pretty in its own way. Yeah. Obviously you probably don't spend a lot of time on, but we've already picked course and imagine that saw somewhat similar. Uh, yeah. Star killer, star, star killer base. I think it's fine, but yeah. Um, Octo, let's just do it. Let's just get right to that Island. <laughs> As Kylo <laughs> says, I see it. I see the Island. <laughs> I book a trip to the island. Yeah. Uh, Maz's castle is tempting for the, the Takodana experience. Uh, but yeah, Octo, I think it's the, you know, it's the way it's presented, not only in The Force Awakens, but obviously The Last Jedi. When I think of Octo, I think of it as being like um, an extremely, you know, uh, like you book a weekend there and you're the only one there, right? Mm -hmm. This is a getaway from everything uh the only stuff that you have is the stuff that you bring with you and you have to be real responsible on the island because mm -hmm. the Linnea are watching you right, right watching. <laughs> uh and i think you mentioned it it's something that i really want to do is i really want some writing retreats yeah um yeah. i think uh sometimes writing takes a long time 
But sometimes that's because you get distracted by everything else. And if you have nothing to do, if you've got your food with you right next to you, and all you have to do is open your mind up and totally live in the world of the story you're trying to figure out, yeah, you can write something pretty magical uh, pretty fast. Uh, and I think I, I've got an obsession with this because one of the last things I did almost a year ago was I had booked, I was like, I, I've talked about it. I'm finally going to do it. I had booked a weekend at a hotel in in LA and I was just going to like, I got an outline of a movie. I'm just going to go bang it out for two and a half days. And it was like right when everything was, was, Oh, we're closing down. Uh, and I, so I canceled that trip and yeah. I would love to go to Octo, just sit in a hut mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with my uh, pre-packed salami, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my little cooler of, uh, of beer and, and maybe some gin and just, write a movie or a novel with oh, yeah. no internet. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's the, that's the rub right there. That's what Luke, that's all Luke wanted to do. Luke was like, I'm off social. Everybody, <laughs> I, I deleted my Instagram. I'm it over It really is like Ray's like, I put you into Google search. You're not on the internet. You've disconnected. Right. Ray's like, we keep tagging you. In post. You <laughs> see it? Luke's like, I muted every word. I muted every word related to this. Your account isn't even locked. You've deleted them all. <laughs> but I found you on LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> oh, damn it. I forgot about LinkedIn. I left that up. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there's utter magic of Octo. And I know you can visit the island, but, you know, yes. you, yeah. you can't, uh, to my knowledge, uh, sit there for a weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I want to do. Any any more thoughts on Octo before we move on to the no, last I, Jedi? I do want to visit that Octo gift shop where Luke's uh, green lightsaber is, apparently. So. <laughs> yeah, and just uh, random stuff that visitors yep. have left that the Lene have collected. The uh, the lost and found <laughs> gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. And, well, and the other thing about Octo is y you think you got a really peaceful time, uh, but then the Lene's pirate spouses might come back and suddenly have a super loud party. <laughs> But then I'm I'm running down. I'm running as fast as Ray. I'm heading over there, and I'm going to swing my lightsaber too. So oh yeah, you ran yeah. so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, we're going to run fast now, though, to the last Jedi new planets. Uh, we got uh, Cantonica, uh, home of Canto Bite or Crate. Uh, I, I didn't uh, consider uh, the First Order supremacy ship a, a planet. <laughs> uh, so Cantonica, Crate. Fair enough, well, sir. Fair enough. Yeah. What 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 do you got? Uh, oh, God, it's Cantonica. I'm going to Canto by now. I've got one foot <laughs> up the door. You kidding me? As much as I love Las Vegas, uh, you know, I know Canto by it's also got a little bit more like, uh, you know, a Monte Cristo or some other kind of um, uh, exotic location uh, uh, with a little Atlantic City sprinkled in, too. But Vegas, the vibe, the gambling, the people, uh, the drinks, uh, the droids uh, spitting coins at you. I'm, I'm in the Canto by yeah, yeah. Is, uh, Monte Carlo, is that? Yeah. Monte, yeah, Monte. Oh, I'm thinking of a Monte Cristo sandwich. I'm hungry. Monte Carlo. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure you can get a, a Monte Cristo in the Monte Carlo that is Cantonica. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Cantonica for me as well. Uh, are you, is is this like in, if you were going to do ranking, which we could on your show, Star Wars Ranked, if we, uh, if you haven't already, is this like your number one? If you could go to any location in Star Wars, you, you go to Space Vegas. Is that... Uh, it might be, look, I think, I think I'm going to be responsible and say Endor or something like that. But even, even right now, as we're speaking, like I, I, um, was chatting with uh, Mark Ellis, our, our buddy, and, and, and he's getting ready to, when it's right and already in some places it's, it's seeming feasible to get back uh, onto some limited engagement stand-up shows. And I don't know if I'll be traveling much with him this time around, but like we were talking about like the year ago, almost last week, I think to, to, to a year, we were in Vegas at the, at the Hard Rock at, at Mandalay Bay. I just love it. I just love it. And and I I know I shouldn't. Now, my uncle just moved out there. My cousin lives out there. They're like, come visit. I'm like, no, you have a house. I want to go to a casino. Um, I, so I got I to gotta temper myself. I'm not going to move there, Joseph, but I'm going to go visit there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think that is, uh, I think that's absolutely great. Um, I, I'm all on board with, uh, with Canto Bite. I think one of the things that, that's got me excited about Canto Bite is thinking about the different things that, that travel can be. And we've talked mm -hmm. about kind of like more rugged adventure. We've talked about, uh, comfort or, or maybe, you know, if you're a creative type, uh, you know, a creative getaway. One of the things that I haven't been thinking about it as much is just like, 
an explosion of fun with friends, right? Of yeah. a, a, a reunion or a, you know, bachelor, bachelorette, uh, however you want to phrase mm-hmm. that uh, these days, that kind of get together. Um, that mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be great to meet a bunch of friends at Canto Bite, you know? Yeah. Yeah. See, here's the thing, not to get so philosophical, but like, you know, not, not, I could never really do that. But, uh, um, you know, to me, Vegas or Cantonica represents the study. It, it's a false front, right? It's a facade. That's what roses look around you. And, and Finn's kind of got my look. <laughs> it's great. Um, look around you and there's dark sides and this and that. And that's the appeal to me, the consistent appeal of Las Vegas for people that like it. I know I know some people that don't love the city uh, or the experience there is it is all not necessarily a lie, but it's you getting to kind of pretend to be someone else. And there's danger in that. And Vegas has those dangers, Sin City indeed. So you know what I mean? Like, uh, and that, and that comes from me when I said I didn't travel much as a kid. And I mentioned that was, it was, I was a young adult, mid twenties, I think it was. And my friend Brian was about 10 years older than me. He was like, you know, let's go to Vegas. And I was like, you can't just do that. We can't just, we got to plan this months in advance. He's like, no, pack a bag. I got us a room. We're going to go Friday. <laughs> And then I got there and that's the first time I felt connected with the bigger world, but though, but that's false, right? It's not necessarily true. <laughs> Paris casino isn't the world, but you, feel <laughs> it. And, and, and I love that about the city. This is why I get so excited. And, and you and I got to spend some time in Vegas and there's no rules. It's like, Joseph, you want to meet in the hotel lobby bar at two in the morning? We can like, <laughs> no one's telling us we can't. Um, so that's what Cantonica the good and the bad, it'd be a, it'd be a test. It'd be a Jedi like test of your moral fiber. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's not only there's the, there's the gambling aspect of it, right. Of it's, yeah. it's all this uh, Ritz and glamor and like all of it. Do you feel a part of the world? Like, well, yeah. the explicit point is to uh, separate you from your money. You know, um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Rat Pack. Uh, they're, mm-hmm. they're definitely an, an entertainment of their time. It's a complex subject, but uh, got, this great uh, Dean Martin uh, live album that was not released in his lifetime because they kept the Rat Pack kept recording shows in Vegas and then they'd get too honest and they couldn't release them at the time. <laughs> and it's like a 4 a.m. show where yeah. it's, you know, there's definitely normal people there, but there's a bunch of entertainers. He introduces all of the entertainers at the end and it takes like five minutes because there's so many there. And like at the end, he's like, well, that's about it for my show. Just head out that door. They're at the tables waiting for you, and they're going to rip you apart. <laughs> and it's just, that's the fun of Vegas, what you're talking about, of like, yeah. it is the illusion, but the illusion is so thin. Yes. That even like, you know, the whole point of like, was uh, you can see one of the biggest stars in the world, like Dean Martin, and get, uh, you know, steak and free drinks for like six bucks in, you know, the early 60s. Why? Because they're going to rip you apart and everybody knows it. It's such a thin illusion. I mean, you've been with me when I'm running around the wind going, Joseph, I found a Game of Thrones slot. <laughs> I know I'm going to lose. I know I'm two minutes away from losing 100 bucks. But you're so excited I, I, to do it. I might not, you know, so. Yeah, you might, you might. Yeah, and uh, can't bite. You're right. I mean, that, I really like that it isn't just the casino town. It plays with some of those ideas of like we're pretending to be classy, but you know, scratch the surface. That's not what's really going on. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. Sorry, it's, it's tied to the Star Wars. Star Wars of it all. It's why I still love that planet and that idea and that concept. And, and whether or not you love individual story beats and points in the Canto Bite stuff and Last Jedi, I can respect that. A lot of people don't. Um, but I, and I, I keep saying, I wish I spent more time there simply because Ryan Johnson saying, I wanted to see the upper crust. I wanted to see the rich of the galaxy. We've been to the bars on Tatooine. I wanted to go to this world where it was an illusion. It's a fascinating thing to look at in star Wars. And, and I loved it. Love yeah. There. Yeah. I'm going there and I am just s- sitting there and doing a lot of people watching. I'm not uh, playing the tables. I'll do like one and say, yeah. I'm going to lose my, you know, 50 credits or whatever. And, and they're going to be gone. Uh, but then man, you know, if at all possible to do a show, uh, Canto Bites, the other place, uh, I would absolutely want to do a show. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Moving on. We could spend all day at uh, Canto Bite. We're, we're going to move on to the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, I did not include all of the light speed skipping planets because okay. uh, we have more than enough options. Uh, but we got Agent Kloss. We have Pizana. We have Kajimi. We have Kefbeer. We have Exegol. Listing the planets from Rise of Skywalker is a great vocal warm up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they're all they're all bordering on little tongue twisters. 
but I made it through. Ken, where are you going? Man, I, 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 I'll just say this. If anyone ever doubts that how much I actually love this movie, I love every one of these planets. They're so different. Uh, yes, there's sand in some. There's trees in others. Yes, we thought one was Endor for a while. Uh, and we, you know, hey, we get to see Endor at the end. I just, I just love, I love these planets. I love that they're here in the Star Wars galaxy. Exegol, too scary. Ken would love to read about it, but wouldn't go. Kef Beer, again, that you want to know what it's like standing in uh, in uh, uh, Shell Beach, uh, <laughs> my hometown. There's Seal Beach and SoCal by Long Beach, South Long Beach. There's Shell Beach uh, near my hometown, like a minute away from my house. That's what Kef Beer is, Shell Beach. High, high cliffs, wind, storm, rain sometimes. Uh, you can head on down. You got about a foot of the beach. <laughs> before you hit ocean and it's cold and stormy and i love doing that but uh i'm gonna answer god i do love the aki aki uh, i'm gonna go kajimi Ooh, i kajimi not you know the first order oppressing everyone around there uh, i'm gonna hopefully go post well i was gonna say can't go post <laughs> <Skywalker>. <laughs> can't. Uh, pre pre, pre. In some other alternate timeline where the First Order is conquered and that planet survives, that looks like a little kind of little snowy mountain village that I'd like to go live in. Like a little bit, like it's 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 not f- super, super straight ahead foresty, but you know what I mean? But the cold, the frigid air, uh, and the little kind of cabin community on a hill. Uh, and, and there's some, a lot of other different kind of design um, aspects to Kajimi that aren't necessarily American forest. I get that. But there's something that I could see living there, a little kind of mountain com- mountain community, and I liked it. Yeah, yeah, no, there there is a little vibe. Um, I, I visited a friend who, uh, for a weekend, who had a has a a place in in Arrow Bear. <laughs> it's just a great Arrow Bears, yeah, great town, a great name of a town. Uh, yeah, I think there's. I, I would maybe brave the cold of Kajimi because it is that brief. Like you bustle from your you know, hotel that's made out of some ancient stone <laughs> monastery and you bustle into like a really cozy little bar, uh, really warm, you know, uh, some alien shouting out trivia questions. It sounds cozy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, yeah. Go, go ahead. No, no. And there's a lot of different influences there. I know there was uh, even like a, a Japanese design aesthetic kind of, I remember in the documentary, I think even Mark Hamill points that out. Um, so there's a lot of different things there and a lot of different people I think might be coming through, even though it seems like Zori Bliss and everyone has trouble getting to the colonies. Um, so but anyways, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll run a room at Jimmy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So could Jimmy was a temptation for me. Agent Kloss is a temptation to me cause it's just so, uh, uh, peaceful. Uh, I love the, the description in the rise of Skywalker novelization where Leia reflects on the fact that, uh, she and Luke trained there and Luke called it nice Dagobah. Yeah. <laughs> that it has just as much of a connection to the force because there's so much life there, but it's not, yeah. you know, a, a slimy mud hole. Yeah. Uh, but you know what, Ken, this is the one that I would maybe actually camp for is to go to the Aki Aki festival. Uh, yeah. I would not go to Pizana just to go to Pizana. That is mm-hmm. really hard living, but I feel like, um, I feel like I've never been, uh, but I feel like the Aki Aki Festival is a, has a little bit of Burning Man vibes where it's yeah, yeah. rough it. Uh, but also there's a thousand other people that you could that I could ask for help when I, uh, you know, absolutely inevitably forget something or make some bad choice or didn't know I needed this kind of cream to prevent this, you know, right. <laughs> that yeah. I could probably uh, just pop over to somebody else's camp and like, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't normally camp. Yeah. You got anything for me? <laughs> Um, God bless you burners. I know there's a lot of, uh, some of my closest friends are burners. I did. They, they invite me every year and every time I'm like, did they put up a Ramada in there yet? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Out of all of them, this is the one like that Aki Aki festival is yeah. so beautiful. It's so important to the story, oh, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's so important to the, to the heart of, of mm-hmm. rise of Skywalker, uh, that, this is what they're fighting for. This is what the heroes are fighting for. The, you know, different cultures coming together and celebration and storytelling and uh, food and, and, you know, uh, fireworks and that, that mood. Dance. That's one of those like, ah, yeah, this is the kind of thing where my wife would encourage me to do it and I would be grumpy. And then when I went there, I'd be like, yeah, that was an experience you couldn't get anywhere else. And I enjoyed it. Damn it. hundred <laughs> percent. 
<laughs> All right. Um, any other thoughts on uh, on Rise of Skywalker planets? Ah, no, other than they're just damn beautiful. I love them. Absolutely beautiful. So we're going to go on to The Mandalorian. we got to pay some tribute to, uh, yeah. I, I would say, going back to our early conversation point, this spirit of Star Wars being a travelogue. Boy, is this about Mandalorian going from point A to point B yeah. <laughs> and back yeah. again. Uh, so here are some of the planets, uh, some of them named in the show, some of them not. Uh, we got Moldo Krius is the ice planet uh, where Mando gets the mithral. Then, of course, Navarro, uh, Arvala 7, where Quill uh, hung his hat, uh, Sorgon. We got Trask, the water planet. Uh, we've got Corvus, of course, fish, uh, featuring the city of uh, Kaladin. Uh, Tython, we all know the tragedy of Tython. Uh, Carthon Chopfields. <laughs> and finally, uh, Morak is, uh, is the, uh, the planet uh, uh, featured in the penultimate episode of the second season, that Imperial base there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. You know, what's funny. This is this I'm trying to, you know, every planet here has something that I'm like, Ooh, but then you step outside your door <laughs> and not good. Um, Tython, as we've discussed it before, but we could literally hit off the 118 freeway right now. If we wanted to <laughs> hiked up there before, um, I got it. And, tr- and funny Trask, is not unlike parts of my uh, hometown area, Avila Beach. You you can r- head on out almost to the Power Dablo Canyon Power Plant, and there's a lot of fishing ships and those kind of like that kind of vibe, and a great restaurant with some chowder too. Um, I might have to go Sorgan because that the only risk is those kind of pirates, and if they're defeated, you got yourself an idyllic little land. Yeah, yeah, and you got the the booze, you got it all, yeah. right? Yeah, nice people, good community. Uh, I'm I'm there at Sorgan. Yeah, and it's an uh, organized fist fighting. I don't think that's your thing, but yeah, I'll put some dollars down. <laughs> Gamble a little bit on Sorgan. Yeah. yeah, this one was fun because this is really uh, a tour of different uh, places where things try to eat Mando. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I tell you, I gotta go to Trask. Uh, mm. I need to eat corn clam chowder out of a ceiling hose i just i have to we had so much fun you and i talking about that of the that's not for you yes (laughs) the food stuff uh i you know there's something about travel where sometimes uh there is you know you can go to a well-known place or an adventurous place and sometimes it's fun when there's just like a weird specific idiosyncratic thing that you want to do and mm-hmm. it's just like, I set out to do a weird thing and I do it. Um, the first time I went to uh, the UK, uh, my girlfriend at the time had grown up partially in the UK and she's a real experienced traveler. And she was just like, we can go anywhere. We can do anything. And very much like when your friend was taking you to mm-hmm. Vegas, like we can do that. Yeah. Uh, and at the time, uh, this a small company was making these Doctor Who action figures that weren't that great. And I had but they were the only Doctor Who action figures and I loved them. Uh, and I'd ordered them from the internet. And, you know, the back of this action figure package had this address of their factory that had like a little store attached and a little Doctor Who experience with some props. And like, to me, you know, utterly, uh, totally mysterious foreign. It's a play. It's somewhere in Wales with words that I cannot pronounce. Uh, and she was like, yeah, we can look it up and we can just go there. <laughs> and it's from looking at the back of an action figure package. Oh, wow. And it was like a mission And yeah. it, you know, uh, uh, good, good friend. Uh, now it, it, it was so great of her to introduce that spirit of adventure and say, we can just pick this mission. Mm-hmm. And you know, her thing was like, I like to travel. I, I like to see places. I kind of just want a reason to go. And the fact that you want to go uh, buy Doctor Who action figures from the source, fine. We'll go all the way to Wales <laughs> uh, to do that. And that's the way I feel when I think about Trask of just like, it's just a fun challenge of just like, it's not a big tourist stop. Looks kind of beautiful, kind of rainy. The corn there wears sweaters, but I just want to go to that one place and eat chowder out of a ceiling hose. That's the goal. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> uh, love it. Love it. There's, I mean, looking at these, 
they do such a good job at introducing new planets. Uh, they really do. Our Vala Seven is a, is an intriguing option, but it's it's a. I love my solitude, so I can say that. But I, I like Navarro. I'm rooting for Navarro to just be grow as a as a planet in a city. But you know, again, you step outside, you you go and get some scenery, and you get some like bat monsters picking you up from the air, <laughs> flying you off. Ah, how about that? Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of dangers there on uh, Navarro. You got uh, little force users stealing your cookies. Yeah, yeah nothing safe on Navarro. Uh, Ken, did you keep track of all of your choices for your your travel agenda? I I I, I'm, I could answer. I didn't write them down, but <laughs> yes, I did. All right. Well, uh, tell you what, I'll go first, and then we'll finish with you. I want to summarize where where we picked out. So. Yeah. For myself, uh, I'm going to Aldron uh, for the museums, uh, Cloud City for the shopping, <laughs> and or for the interactive uh, 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 rebellion exhibits, uh, Coruscant to do some stand-up and some Jedi tours, uh, Camino do some, uh, pretend I'm a clone, Kashyyyk, let a Wookiee carry me through the trees, <laughs> Mandalore go to the war museums, uh, Scarif also uh, battle place reenactments, uh, Corellia, I want to tour those shipyards, Octo, I'm going to write a movie. Uh, Cantonica, I'm going to drink and hang out with pals. Uh, Pasana, I'm going to try uh, to have a good Burning Man experience while watching the Aki Aki dance. And then I'm going to Trask to eat some chowder. Well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> That's a life well lived right there. Um, yeah, so I am, uh, I'm going to the Death Star to study the infrastructure of evil, apparently. Uh, I'm going to go get some culture and faux culture at the uh, urban living uh, lifestyle center that is cloud city on Bespin. Uh, we're all going to Endor where uh, we're going to get different experiences out of there, but mostly I just want to hang out with low grade and chirp on everyone. Uh, Coruscant for me and uh, going to get that big city life and turn my back on the relaxing calm of Naboo. Uh, Camino for some rain though. In my heart, I might want to go to Geonosis, but let's go uh, hang out with some wonderful folks uh, making clones on Camino apparently. Uh, then from there, you know, we're going to Kashyyyk because uh, I want to stay in the nice parts, the, 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 the parts with the nice huts and uh, the good, <laughs> Uh, loyal pals uh and then uh i uh, gonna get some history some culture some mystic culture with ilum uh but then i'm gonna go get isolated on lamu and severine though severine uh you know i might end up retiring to there we just don't know <laughs> about that uh despite wanting to drink with amaz and everyone at the castle i'm gonna head to octo to finally live out my dreams as someone who's disconnected from everything but really <laughs> in my heart i want to spend the rest of my days at cantonica i just know i can't so uh, maybe I'll uh, go somewhere in the middle and go to Kajimi to a nice uh, oppressed, uh, dangerous uh, mountain community with some good people. And then uh, round it all out, uh, I will uh, probably uh, get to Sorgan one day as soon as the pirates are taken care of. I, I love the picture that's emerging that th there are bursts of being highly social, uh, doing yeah. shows, being around just millions of people on Coruscant. Uh, and on uh, Cantonica, uh, but largely you are touring to see where you might retire to. <laughs> this is, once again, sir, you're so good with themes. You are describing <laughs> most conversations around my house with Grace going, you're just, you know, out and about at the bars. You're so funny and zippy and funny on stage, but at home you're just kind of quiet and stoic. And I'm like, yeah, we're home. That's what we do here. <laughs> And I'm just looking at maps, picking out other places that I can be yeah. quiet and stoic in the future. Well, I tell all my friends, I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. One of these days, I'm going to just move to Big Bear. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'll never do it. I'll never do it. <laughs> but it is fun to threaten. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to Big Bear. <laughs> That's the definitely, uh, if you were a sitcom character, yeah. uh, that would be your tagline right now. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to Big Bear. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so, uh, Ken... Mm -hmm. Has going through this exercise made you think anything new about Star Wars as a travelogue of Star Wars as a, a narrative that that is built to take us to different places and different cultures? I, I don't think it's made me think of anything new. I think it's confirmed what uh, I think I've always connected to. We talked about Star Tours. Uh, I think I said it was eight or nine. I, I, Star Tours didn't open up till it was uh, around 10 or 11, around, around that age but we were there first year within the first few months we we were fortunate enough to go there star tours in 87 80 whatever it was and i was fascinated by that i was fascinated by the headcanon of it all about what if those wait what if those ships 
did need to go attack the Death Star. Could they do it? Could they help? I think it would help to have them in the fleet. But also the idea of just seeing it as this galaxy that you can go touch and see and visit and experience. It's so key to Star Wars um, that uh, a whippy, zippy adventure you and I always talk about, the whiz bang, uh, as you say often, comes from just different people, different cultures, different worlds, uh, and seeing it in Star Wars. It's very important, and this just confirms that. And I want to travel the galaxy. Yeah, very, very well said. I think for me, it it really makes me think about this duality of comfort and adventure, and how I think about that for travel. I think about that just kind of for how you how you approach life. I think for you, it's a little bit of like you, when you're at home and you're comfortable, you're just you're stoic and you're thinking through your things, and then you're having some adventures when you're out in the bar, and you know, like yep. uh, that balance is needed. Uh, and I think there's this great balance in Star Wars where they're you, you visit some planets and now they've become uh, familiar or, or they're really familiar to the characters and the characters are trying to go home. Um, and then there is that sense that, that familiar comforting sense that the galaxy is real and, and we as fans know these planets and they're all connected and it's all real. But then there's an adventure where any moment any character could suddenly crash on a planet they've never heard of that they know nothing about. And there could be anything lurking under the surface and i think star wars is you know its movement through all of these planets that they've created and, and will still create has this great vibe of it has the realism of this is a real world that you can chart how long would it take to get from point a to point, point b or what route might you hyperspace route you might take but then it always always has that unknown where you never know when you might encounter something new that recaptures that sense of wonder Excellent. Well said. And let's all not forget, Luke stared out of those twin sons, dreaming not just of a life of a hero, but just a bigger world out there beyond what he knew. And Star Wars continues to build from that, I think. Yeah. Well, it was great uh, staring out at the twin sons and dreaming with you, Ken. I have one final uh, travel question. Uh If invited, would you go to Mortis? Oh, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> no, so now see, if I'm invited, no, if you stumble on there, it's fine. But see, you would tell, you would say things, right? You'd be like, um, hey, this, you get to this beautiful plant life. There's this, there's this uh, angelic kind of uh, woman on one side, a uh, kind of dark, disturbing guy on the other side. But yeah, they're both interesting together. They fight. It's kind of fun to watch. Uh, then you got the father. Um, and even if the father is now Ezra and everything's switched over, because that's clearly going to happen. Uh, no. No, um, I, I don't want to draw it to two real world of comparisons, but there's some places like one of my old bosses, he and his wife love traveling the world. And they'd go to some of those places of like, well, first, so the armed guards picked us up from the boat and took us to our cabin, which had netting around it. Oh, for the bugs? No, no, no. For the man eating uh, uh, platypuses that would come by. <laughs> it all sounds good, but it's, if Mortis sounds great, the fact that you might not be able to leave it, I say, uh, I'm good. I'm going to head to Canto Bike. Yeah, I think uh, I feel I have the same gut reaction. I feel like if invited to Mortis, I would get tempted and say yes and then regret it immediately because like, what what have I agreed to? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> uh, do I belong here? Uh, do I need to stay here? What's going on? Uh, Mortis is one of the most fascinating destinations in Star Wars where perhaps Ezra will end up. We don't know. We just like talking about it. We'll find out. Ken, where can people find us? Yay, hey, you don't have to travel the galaxy too far to find us. Uh, we're on Twitter <laughs> at Force Center Pod. We're on Instagram, Facebook as uh, uh, Force Center Podcast. We're on YouTube as well. Subscribe over there. Podcasts available on Anchor, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Amazon Music, a lot of podcast <laughs> locations. Um, there's even more and more on the way. Uh, merch at tpublic.com slash user slash four center. You can support us directly at patreon.com slash four center. Always excited to have new patrons on board uh, because when you do get on board, you can get into our Discord community, which is a fun place to talk Star Wars amongst friends. You can follow me at catnapsock or go to catnapsock.com or to the new spot to uh, the gpa.fun. Having a lot of fun over there, uh, hanging out and uh, spreading positivity as best we can. Joseph. 
Yeah, that sounds great. Check all that stuff out. You can find me at Twitter and Instagram at Joseph Scrimshaw. As Ken said, of course, you can find uh, Force Center on all the social media. This seems like the kind of episode where if people want to share their favorite planet, the destination they'd like to go to, we always love uh, hearing from fans. This is such a, a fun discussion, so feel free to weigh in on that on our social media. But like I said, for myself, uh, Twitter and Instagram at Joseph Scrimshaw. You can check out my website, Joseph Scrimshaw. Dot com for all of my other comedy adventures, including the weird fantasy comedy TV show I write for, Tigtone. Both seasons of Tigtone are now streaming on HBO Max. You don't have to travel anywhere, but uh, maybe your couch uh, to check that out. But for now, uh, for myself, uh, for Ken, for all of the fun of Cantonica, this has been Force Center.